He's coming in? All right. Where's the cheering? I don't hear anything. Come on, let's go. This is awesome. Are you kidding me? Oh, there he is. I see he, he opted for the conservative footwear today. We're, we're coining a new term, the anti-flyover. So we want to show people that the future of transportation living near an airport isn't going to be incredibly loud and obnoxious every time there's, there's a plane going overhead, but rather it's going to be nice and purring, quiet aircraft uh, moving around. This is a piece of history. In the future, they'll look back on this as the dark ages. <laughs> That's right. You know, I think you're right. <laughs> Today, I'm actually doing something really interesting. I'm driving up from Darien, Connecticut, all the way up to Danbury, Connecticut, to the airport. Why? Because there is a world record electric plane attempt that is happening today. Um, I just learned about this situation with a, I think it's a, a student from Lafayette College, which is in Easton, Pennsylvania. And he's an engineering student. Student. His name is Remy Octe. And there is a plane in Hartford, Connecticut. It's an electric plane made somewhere over in Europe. I have to find out more about it. But what he's planning on doing is driving the plane or flying the plane um, from Hartford all the way down to Easton, Pennsylvania, with the goal of doing a flyover at next weekend's Lafayette Lehigh football game. How cool is that? So in order for him to do that, he's got to get the plane from Hartford down over to uh, Easton, Pennsylvania. And today's the day, a week, actually six days before that event is actually happening. So I'm going to go up there and find out about this and see what's happening with this electric plane. Now, the thing is, how they're going to charge it, this is the coolest thing. He's got a team of Ford F-150 Lightnings to, to charge up this, this plane. Okay. And it's, what, 45 minutes from my house? I got to go. I just learned that the plane doesn't have a windshield wiper because the, the prop blows all the water off the windshield so we got to think about modding the tesla for that that's that's pretty cool i'm not sure i'd fit in there mike Woo all right well give that man a jacket and an umbrella yeah right <laughs> did you notice it was raining <laughs> oh there he is I see he, he opted for the conservative footwear today. Yes. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah. Everybody, we even got a little tent here. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And the F-150 Lightning so. pulling up yeah. to hook up. Yeah, this has been a project. I, I've been keeping track of hours. Hook, uh, hook up the charge. Hours. Soon, though, we'll be all electric in a few years. Yes. So I'm going to yes. go get the, uh, the plane charge. You could overhear him, but he said soon they're all going to be electric in a few years. So as technology advances, I'm, I'm not going to doubt him. All right, so here we have Remy Octe. I'm super proud of this guy. Right <laughs> thank you, thank I just, you. I just witnessed him landing here. Um, but Remy, you know, I wanted to get into uh, the project itself. We'll cover on another channel. But really, what I want to do is I want to turn up the geek, the oh yeah, factor, the nine thousand here. Let's do it. And uh, I know that you you had mentioned you you know about Kyle or you reached out to him about yep. this project. He unfortunately landed in Norway today on a on a plane a little bit bigger than this <laughs> one right here. Uh, he sends his regards and wanted me to stop by and interview you. And and the the request he had was. Get geeky. Okay. The mic is all yours. Mike. Okay. Well, let's let's talk and walk because we'll walk sure. over to the truck Absolutely. as we get into. I'll, I'll just show you all the parts. We'll start out with where the power is selected from. We'll go in the passenger side because Colin, Colin's in there on the driver's side. All right. Colin is is the son of Patrick, the owner of this of this vehicle. Okay. Cool. So if you want to just scoot in here next to me, uh, we can pull up the Pro Power. 
So we'll go here to Pro Power on board. So these are this is an extended range um, Lariat trim um, model F-150 Lightning um, owned by owned by Patrick. So because it's a Lariat um, model, it has the 9.6 kilowatt um, Pro Power onboard package, which is critical to this project uh, because that gives us that 240 volt 30 amp plug in the back, which is what we're utilizing. If we didn't have that, if we had one of the lower trim models, um, the Pro or the um, or the XLT, we wouldn't have that plug unless it was specifically added. All of the trucks on this convoy, so with four trucks in total, they're all extended range uh, Lariat uh, model trucks. So you, if you uh, bring the camera in a little bit closer here, you can see we have the rear in, uh, two inverters activated. So the truck has three total, got one in the front that outputs 2.4 kilowatts, and then we have two in the back that each output um, 3,600 watts, but they're 180 degrees out of phase of each other. So that means that they're two 120, but since they're 180 degrees out of phase, we can get 240 volt out of that. So that plug has two hots, each giving us 120 volts, um, 100, or 120 volts, 180 degrees out of phase, and then we have our ground pin. Um, so you can see 3,600 watts total on each one. We have that slightly derated to, uh, we're pulling 28 amps. And that's just because with anything, you, you never want to max things out completely. Um, you always want to derate them slightly. So that's a, what is that? Maybe like a three or three or 4% um, derated um, value. So that's our A and B inverter, as I said, and that's pumping that power to the back. So we'll head to the back. Um, and we'll look at the plug itself. So we got 7.2 kilowatts in the back and we got 2.4 kilowatts in the front. So even though we're maxing out the 7.2 in the back here, we could still be using the 2.4 in the front because that's completely, we'll just wait for, that's completely separate. So we could be making popcorn, we could be um, grilling on an electric grill. Um, that's completely separate um, from what we're doing here in the back. So this is the 240 volt 30 amp plug back there. Um, it's an L14-30P plug, which is spliced on, um, I can do this off the top of my head. This is three strand eight gauge um, wire to a Meltric uh, 250 volt two, two prong, one ground um, pinned plug. So these are switch rated plugs made by Meltric. They're an industrial grade plug. The only one on the market that's switch rated, super safe. Um, Switch rated meaning that the plug itself is actually considered a switch. So when these are used for heavy industry uh, machinery, you don't have to de-energize the circuit. You can just unplug it directly. So they're very common in large manufacturing facilities. Um, and for this, it's kind of overkill, but overkill is underrated. So, um, so that's our plug right here that plugs these together. This plug, so this goes to the charger. Um, we have other plugs here um, at the Bra um, Brainerd Airport, uh, just plug into the wall, uh, which is how this plane is typically charged. We have three of these um, cables just to have a couple backups. And then we have an, um, a wall mounted plug that accepts this um, at Braden Air Park where we stop. So this, the original electrician who installed the outlets for this plane um, back at Brainerd Airport um, a few months ago, they decided to use these Meltric plugs. Um, and when we heard about that, we knew that we needed to use the Meltric plugs to make this adapter for, for the F-150 Lightning. Um, so I reached out to Meltric, called the local supplier, um, and said, hey, we're working on this project. Um, we need a couple of these plugs. And the guy who picked up the phone is like, oh, I'm a Lafayette alumna. I'd love to help you out. So no Mel Meltric's actually sponsoring this project. They sent us um, a few thousand dollars worth of these plugs oh, cool. um, for free to be that's able to really use for this great. project. And their whole team is actually coming out to the football game. So this plane is heading to, uh, to Lafayette College to do a flyover of the Lafayette Lehigh football game. Um, so we're coining it the, the oldest college football rivalry, rivalry gets the, the newest transportation technology. So that's, oh, the, that's the slogan. Um, and that's, that's how these plugs um, became part of this project. Right. Now, now, normally when you are plugging something into a car, you've got to convert the AC to DC. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's that's our next stop. Okay. So unless you have any other questions here, we'll follow the wire and we'll... Let, no, let's follow the wire. We'll follow the wire. Okay. So... As you astutely said, you're exactly right. So when you go to do level two charging, you're uh, you're doing you're doing AC to DC um, converting because your truck truck or most EVs have um, AC to DC uh, converters built right into them. So that level two charging, then your truck converts it, charges up your battery. Weight is a big issue with planes. So 
The plane doesn't have that on board. It needs to be supplied with DC um, voltage, which is what this is. So this is what's usually built into your car. This is an external AC to DC converter. So this is taking that 240 volt, 30 amp supply. We have it selected at 28 amps, which is why you saw before that that's slightly derated. So this is pulling in 28 amps, 240 volts. It's switching it over to right around 400 volts at uh, 16, 17 amps. Right. Uh, so, so quick question. I, I saw earlier you, you plugged into the plane with a J1772 adapter. It's actually not J1772. It's, oh, it's, a, European oh, it's a European standard. Yeah. Because normally, if I plug my car 1772 into my car, that's AC. Right? Yes. And then the car is actually converting the AC to the DC on the onboard charger. Yep. Or the onboard converter. But to save weight, this is the unit that yep. actually is used? Exactly. And where did you get that unit? So that comes with the plane. Um, when when this plane was was oh, interesting. built new, no. yeah. Interesting. Uh, wow. Okay. So this here, and what's great, so this um, this charger, I don't know if you've seen in Teslas, you can select the amperage yeah. that you're charging at. You can also go up by a single amp at a time. You can right. do like 23, 24, 25. So we, you can't do, this with, uh, do that with this charger. You have 10 amps, 16 amps, normally 32 amps, 50 amps, and 70 amps, which meant that for this project, we would eat, we, if we, we tried it, we set it to 32, and it popped the circuit breaker on the truck because the truck can only supply 30 amps. So that meant that we were only going to be able to charge at 16. So I worked with the development office at Lafayette College, and the vice president of the company that uh, manufactures these planes is a Lafayette alum. So I called him up and said, hey, we need some custom firmware for the charger. Can your team build that for us? Wow. Two-day turnaround. They got us this new firmware, and that's where we got 28 amp options. Look so that's you. slightly right, derated. You are knocking it out of the park here. I love it. <laughs> and that's just scratching the surface. I mean, there's so many Lafayette alumni that are engaged with this. It, I, uh, I've met probably five or six times now with uh, President Hurd of Lafayette College, who's been incredibly supportive of this project, and we've just laughed so many times. It just really uh, brought together, and, the, and I can't thank the development office enough at Lafayette College because they, I, I would just text. Text Ben Landis, I'd be like, hey, do we have any Lafayette alumni at this company? He'd send me their contacts. I'd reach out to them. And it was just like that on rapid fire. Turns out, this is a really fun fact, the first Ford F-150 Lightning prototype vehicle that was used to then design these coined the father of the F-150 Lightning that'll soon be in a museum um, in Detroit, Michigan, was built by a team of engineers led by a Lafayette alumni. So Keith O'Glesby led that team. He's coming out to the game um, next weekend to see the plane fly over, to see the trucks and such. And I've been in contact with There are 10 Lafayette alumni who are engineers at Ford. I've been in contact with them about this project. Um, and, and they've been incredibly helpful and really, really supportive of, um, of all of this. So that's been, that's been great. Original plan was to have it back there and have it ratchet strapped down because it's closer to the plug. But our backup plan, we measured all this up a few weeks ago to make sure that uh, we'd have the backup plan of being able to attach it to the D-rings right here um, on the corner. Um, so we just have it ratchet strapped down with two straps um, to make sure that it stays nice and secure. Um, we will be doing um, the, the football handoff. This is coined the football for this project um, because the trucks are going to um, charge because we have four trucks, each broken up into two teams. Um, so that there's always redundancy whenever we're charging the, um, the aircraft. Because we want to make sure that we're um, always having the, the plane charging whenever we're on the ground and we're never waiting around for a truck, this uh, charger is going to get passed off at the next stop um, to the other truck team uh, so that then this truck team can go charge um, and that truck team's charging now so that they can uh, then receive the football and then carry on charging the plane for the duration um, of the trip. So yeah, it's a 19 so creativity and ingenuity going on here with the existing technology. And you know, it was funny as I was driving over here, I referenced uh, Leonardo da Vinci who invented that helicopter over there. Oh yeah. Okay, but, <laughs> but unfortunately, he didn't have the technology, but what I really admire what you're doing here and the whole team from Lafayette College and also the integration with business is the fact that you're using the existing technologies to be able to do a project like this and then get it off the ground, literally. So now this wire then comes from that inverter yep. and I see it heads over to the plane. Exactly, yeah. So that just pops in right here um, into the plane. And again, off the top of my head, I don't know, remember what it is, but it's definitely not J1772. It's a European standard. So um, EVs in Europe is use- CCS2, is that what that is? I, I, I can look in the POH and figure it out. I can send you a text message afterwards, but um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's just how it pops in. That's that, yeah, I was going to say I would, but we do want to keep it on the charge. I don't want to kill your plan your day, so. If you're still here when we unplug it, probably, which will be fairly soon. Yeah, we're only, oops.
about 12 more percent until we're okay. uh, until we're done. So you'll you'll see the plug when so we come out. So this plane is made where in Slovenia? Uh, Slovenia and Italy. They I believe the R and D facility Slovenia and major production facilities in Italy. Okay. I would say I believe I could be incorrect, but all right. And now tell me about the uh, the batteries and the and, and that are that are on board in Jack, this in Jack. this uh, plane. Yes, yeah, yeah. So these are lipos, um, so lithium polymer batteries, which is how you save weight. It's similar to what racing drones and drones have, um, and there are two of them. So there's one door here, and then on the other side of the aircraft, behind the seats, there's another one. So that's just for weight and balance to make sure that the weight is evenly distributed front to back, which is critically important in planes like this, planes like that, any small plane. Um, weight and balance is, is really, really important. What's fun though, right, when, so that's my family Cessna back there, whenever I'm flying that, the, the weight changes throughout the flight uh, because you're burning fuel. So that's a, a constant change of, of performance characteristics, but with this plane, never changes weight. Um, once you're in it, you're in it because the battery's full or battery's empty, weigh the, weigh the same amount. Um, so yeah, they're two, two batteries, 21 kilowatt hours um, combined. Uh, they're set up in parallel, so should one of them fail during flight, um, you can still, still continue the flight. Um, and yeah, they're about, they're 400 volt batteries. Um, and now how does, I'm just curious yeah. so, some sort of the, the flight characteristics in an EV plane yeah. versus a gas powered plane. What is the torque like? And you've, you've obviously learned on planes like, you know, not like this. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I have 200 hours in gas powered planes and now from these two flights and one before, probably like just over an hour in electric planes. So when you're on the runway <laughs> yep. and you punch it, yep. is there a difference in torque like there is an electric car versus a gas car or how, how does it feel to you? It's the same as when the first day I remember driving an EV for the first time where you have that instant torque. Um, so you're not, you're not building power as your, as your um, engine is, is, is or you're, build, you're not building power as, as you're going down the runway. You just feel that instant torque and you're, you're off really quick. The, the landing uh, and takeoff performance of this aircraft is really short. Right. Um, so the plane back there, and I mean, it's hard to compare apples to apples, of course, because that's a th over 3,000 pound aircraft when it's fully loaded, and this is a 1,200 pound <laughs> aircraft when it's fully loaded. Wow. But you can definitely feel it. And I think from an aviation perspective, the biggest difference that is somewhat startling to people is how the prop will stop when you're taxiing. Right, so once you start up, you start up your engine on a gas-powered plane, and you might have seen this with other jets that are around there, or, and there's also a jet um, at, the, at our previous stop. You're just burning fuel when you're taxiing, when you're getting clearances, and there's a lot of fuel used just on the ground. Um, and I think, in addition to just the amount of fuel that you save by conducting your flight without um, gas, of course. There's a lot of fuel that's burned by aircraft that are just sitting on the ground. But when we're stopped, we just stop the prop and we don't use any electricity. And we just hang out there. We talk on the radios as we need to, wait for traffic to pass, and then we can get on our way. And there's also regen braking. So with this aircraft, if you, if you uh, dive steep enough, you'll start charging the battery, albeit it's not a significant amount. And since it's not like cars where you're braking and going and braking and going, it's, it doesn't make a huge difference, um, but you do see the little, the little throttle position or the little kilowatt meter go to negative um, when you're descending, descending down. Right. You know what I thought you were going to say was I thought when you stopped the prop that this car had, uh, or this car, this plane had actually motorized wheels that you could use. Which would use no, no. Now what we got here is we got our um, EIS, our engine, or not our electrical <laughs> instrument system here, the, the screen that's on. Um, so this shows us our state of charge, so at 78%, uh, we're pulling in 27 amps, 240 volts, so that's what we have selected there on the charger, um, and our charger is at 43 degrees Celsius. Um, this is showing us what's going into the battery, so that's uh, 396 volts, uh, 15 amps DC, and the char uh, charger batteries, or the batteries themselves, are at uh, 33 degrees Celsius. Um, so that just stays up there and keeps us posted on the charge status. And then other than that, in terms of normal instrumentation, uh, we have all the typical um, altimeter, airspeed indicator, um, HSI, all those things. We've got our compass up there. Headsets, it's pretty bare bones. What's cool about this plane is that it has a ballistic parachute in it. So if anything were to happen um, where the plane could no longer fly itself, um, you just pull this handle right here, um, and then the, a big, huge parachute shoots out of the back of it in a rocket and um, then the whole plane descends really? via, via the parachute. Yep. That is so, please don't use that. No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> I absolutely will not touch that.
This is not an instrument rated plane. This is only a VFR rated plane. Uh, so visual flight rules, which means you have to um, see where you're going. Um, so there are various different um, VFR, minimum VFR uh, weather restrictions in terms of visibility um, and distance from clouds and such uh, that you have to abide by. So this is not an IFR rated aircraft. Okay, great. Well, yeah. thanks for that explanation. That's Absolutely. I, I, for one, for, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't fit in there. Yeah. <laughs> So all aircraft um, that are flying what's called VFR, so visual flight rules, have to land with 30 minutes of cruise performance fuel left. Um, so whether you're flying gas plane, electric plane, whatever aircraft, if it's VFR, um, then that's 30 minutes. If you're flying IFR, then that's um, 45 minutes in addition to being able to fly to your alternate um, airport. So um, that's across the board. And from the FAA's perspective, while the um, airworthiness certificate of this plane um, is shows that it is an electric aircraft. Um, it's still an experimental category or experimental exhibition uh, category aircraft. So to the to the FAA in terms of how we're actually flying it, they don't really care that it's gas versus um, electric. Right. Um, and that's why there's actually no certified electric aircraft in the in the states right now because they're developing the certification process to be able to certify them. Right. So we're still in that. Yeah. There are other people who have done the world's first EV flight. That's been done a while ago. The first interstate EV flight, that's also been done multiple times. Um, the first EV flight um, that's, that was charged up with solar panels, we were talking with um, Joseph um, Oldham out in California, who actually did that with one of these same planes a few years ago. There's um, one of these, these, this is an Alpha Electro, so there's an Alpha in uh, New Zealand and Australia that have also done uh, world's first flights in Australia. Australia and New Zealand respectively. Um, so for us today though, this is the first time that an uh, electric plane has done a interstate trip or any even, even within a um, state trip that is being recharged by an EV. Um, so this is really cool to us because it can supply a lot of power and is incredibly mobile. Um, in talking with Joseph about this project, he's like, yeah, that's really cool because you're able to go anywhere. And um, I think it's a great, uh, great progression from, um, from past pro um, cross-country trips uh, uh, with these specific types of planes. Uh, for example, in Australia, they had a Cessna 182, so that's exactly the same aircraft as that, um, that carried that charger. So they took the rear seats when they were doing this a few years ago because they didn't have an F-150 Lightning um, that could supply so much power from the back. Uh, they had a generator in the back of the Cessna and they had that um, charger back there. So they'd land um, and then they'd turn on the generator, plug in the charger, charge up the um, Alpha Electro and then continue on. So this is really exciting to us because we're able to do it completely from EVs, from a mobile power pack that can take us, can take us anywhere. So that's the first, first world record. And then the second one um, is the first uh, electric plane to do a flyover of a sporting um, event at a stadium, which I'm really excited about um, because I've always gone, or whenever I've gone to sporting events, you have big military jets that rumble the stadium and they're just making so much noise. I don't particularly love all the noise and having my whole body shook. Um, and we're, we're coining a new term, the anti-flyover. So we wanna show people that the future of transportation, living near an airport isn't gonna be incredibly loud and obnoxious every time there's, there's a plane going overhead, but rather it's gonna be nice and purring, quiet aircraft uh, moving around. So. That's, that's so I'm a junior. You're a junior. And yep. what's your, what is your major? So engineering studies, environmental studies, double major, and a data science minor. And, minor. And, and you know what I love what you're doing is you're not just going to school, but you're out there affecting the world right now. And I'm curious, you know, you've done this project or you're going to do this project. I'm confident you're going you're gonna to nail it. But what do you, what's your aspirations? Do you want to be a pilot? Do you want to get into engineering? I'm just curious a little bit about you as a, as a person. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I ask myself that a lot. Um, and I'm not really sure yet. I really love projects that bring together different interests of mine. Um, so for me, this was a way to connect my passion for aviation. I've been a pilot now for two years. Um, so to connect that passion with my engineering studies, my environmental studies major, and I'm also a staff member of the Dyer Center for Innovation Entrepreneurship at Lafayette College. Um, so this really brought together all of those interests of mine. Um, and a lot of people asked when I was first going to flight school, do you want to become a commercial pilot? And it never, that never really interested me. I got into aviation because my grandparents have been flying for 35 years now um, and flew um, me and my family um, a couple times a year growing up. Um, and I knew that in the future we might, we might transition to then me flying um, my grandparents once, uh, once they're no longer flying anymore. And we, we've made that transition now. So that was how I got into it. But now that I started learning about electric planes 
um, and, and learning how I could connect it with my other two majors. That's where this project really came from. And I could definitely see myself um, doing more aviation demonstrations in this space. Um, I was talking with someone at one of the meetups um, at, at Waterbury Oxford previously about new unleaded fuel. So all small piston engine aircraft still use leaded fuel. It accounts for 70% of lead contamination in the atmosphere today. The EPA has done a great job um, cracking down on industries that emit lead, um, but small general aviation aircraft um, still do. A new fuel after 15 years of testing just got certified for every single aircraft about two months ago. So that's a brand new product in, in the aviation industry, so I'd love to do something in that space um, to help um, get people aware of that and then also adopting that, that new fuel so that we can continue to, to or stop <laughs> spreading lead into the environment. There, there's an interesting study out of California that found that children who grow up um, within two to five miles of, a, of small airports have elevated levels of lead in their blood. Um, and that's something that very much bothers me and has been on my mind ever since getting into aviation. So being able to do something like this, where we're able to spread awareness about electric aviation um, and in the future potentially do something um, to get lead out of fuel. And then there's also biofuels for um, jets and diesel aircraft, um, switching them over to carbon neutral fuels. There are a lot of different, different ways that the aviation industry is evolving right now. And I'd love to be at the intersection of those Maybe becoming a commercial pilot and doing demonstrations, but not not a commercial pilot in the tradition. I mean, I'll say this, okay? You are a born leader. I don't care what it is you put your sights on. Just I've met you what today? Yeah. I didn't know who you were yesterday. Forty five minutes ago. And, and, and what I can tell you is that whatever you choose to do in life, I'm sure you're gonna be super successful. And I just wanna say that to the Lafayette football team. Okay. You better win. <laughs> you better win. If you don't get the spirit and the energy from what Remy's effort is going on here, multi-state, look what he's doing. You guys better be, you better win that game, okay? And, uh, and I, I wish you, the football team, the best of luck. I can. I wish you the success continuing on. I think you got weather in your favor, my friend, for the rest of the day. Yeah, I think it's going to continue to clear up, which I'm excited for. And, and I thank you so. Thank you so much for uh, for this very detailed uh, explanation. And thanks again for everyone joining another episode of Out of Spec Reviews. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care now. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it.